And we're joined by Nick Peltier about a week after this amazing swim. So tell us a little bit about what happened in the early hours. You, you, you hit some setbacks right away, I guess, or pretty early on. Yeah, so about a quarter of the way through, I was on pace to beat the record. I was going really well. And then my right shoulder, just something in the rotator cuff, it just wouldn't go anymore up. So I couldn't get like a high catch anymore with it. So I had to, I did backstroke for like 10 kilometers and that just killed my pace. But I was moving, but it was going at one kilometer an hour. And then every, people on my team were like, can you do any other stroke? And I tried this like weird T-Rex kind of stroke <laughs> and I figured out that worked. So I, I went right. with that for a while. So you had to kind of, in terms of your goal, you had to kind of shift gears as the record setting kind of disappears. Now it just becomes endurance like to complete uh, the goal yeah at a certain point it, like reality sets in you're not getting the record anymore but this uh this swim was very intrinsically motivated for me so the record was awesome and a cherry on top if i could get it and i i think that my abilities if i were able to keep my shoulder how it was could have gotten it but i didn't and uh at a certain point then it just becomes getting the job done so but just uh, sw swimming, it was 71 hours? Yeah, 71 hours, 12 minutes. I mean, just to keep going for 71 hours in that lake is, I mean, that's something that probably won't happen again. Yeah, I, uh, I was not expecting it for it to be that long. Um, we were expecting to go one full, or two full days, one full night. Ended up being three full days, three full nights going into the fourth day. So it... Uh, it was almost like, like I said, twice as long as I was expecting, basically. But uh, yeah. yeah. In terms of your kind of um, mental state, uh, I might be projecting here, but I'm thinking it's you know middle of the night or through the night is when it, you might hit a low where it's hard to stay motivated, and you had to do that three times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the nights get uh, low in any ultra endeavor. It's just you lose the light, you lose kind of the spunk of everything um, for me it was tough because even the water uh, you can't tell a difference between the water and the sky because it's black and it goes to black especially going out to like Rattlesnake Island there's no lights out there there's nothing and then I had all this grease in my face so I didn't even have sensation on my face so I could literally it was so disorienting and that in itself is is uh, demoralizing because it makes it feel like you're not moving in the water you look and you see something on the shore maybe there's a little light or something and then you swim as hard as you can for a couple hours and you look and it looks like you haven't moved and then you feel the the waves coming against you and it's very disorienting so do you truly get a boost say after you're passing under the bridge and you can see there's people that have made the effort to get there you know probably at a time you needed some energy do you did you get some out of that oh yeah yeah for sure going on the bridge was super cool i had never made it that far so um even that in itself and then because we were originally planning to get there at like two to three in the morning but because it took me so long i was there in in the day and there were a lot more people there and yeah. all them cheering and everything was awesome and then people along the the whole swim they'd i had my live tracker so they'd come out and meet me in boats or we went by some camps and there were hundreds of kids yelling my name and people would come out and swim with me so the support was awesome from the community were there ever any difficulties with with other boats or watercraft of any kind along the way um i mean during the days sometimes going through like Kelowna and stuff you have more chop in the water because of the boats but uh, no, not really. It was it was pretty good to be honest. I chose midweek uh, purposely just so the boat chop was less than a busy weekend or something. So yeah. And then um, so then you, you you get into Penticton and it was um, what five in the morning or so. And uh, I guess it, uh, leading up to that, you're starting to realize, okay, I'm actually going to finish this swim. Just take us there. Yeah. So I got there at 4:30 a.m. on the morning of the fourth. Had started on basically 4.30 a.m. or 5 on the morning of the 1st, so three days later, uh, going in the fourth day. And yeah, I would say probably about 10 kilometers out, you get around this kind of uh, mass in the water where there's some trees and stuff, and then you can actually see Penticton, like not just Penticton, but you can see the finish where the SS Sycamus is. So that was super cool to realize, hey, I've done how many 10 kilometer pool sessions and I just have to do that over again. So um, I've had a bunch of people as well from my crew. They had brought their friends out and they got in the water and they were swimming and everything. So it was nice to have support out there. But 
I would say honestly, as soon as I hit the bridge, uh, intrinsically, I knew I was going to be able to do it. But um, my team might have had a not less faith, but they might have been a bit worried for me because I was struggling at that point. But inside me, when I hit the bridge, I thought there was nothing to stop me. Yeah. You had sort of, you, you had a pace going and you felt you could keep doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then what I found kind of amazing, after you get out of the water, I, 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 you, you know I mean, to t say you're a dead tired would be an understatement, but yet you, there's some kind of burst of adrenaline where you, you were able to, you know, really celebrate the moment and you were talking and you, you appear to be in pretty good condition yeah i mean obviously arms and things and your your body's tired from lack of sleep but it's weird to say but at, at a certain point once i got past that idea of like it's gonna be 40 hours it stopped feeling like an event and more kind of felt like this is my life now until it's done so i got used to however long it took it didn't matter at that point about oh, if we hit 70 hours like We'll get close, but it's done. It's like, no, no matter how long this take, if if I had to go another day, I would have found a way to go. At that point I was at, there was nothing that was going to stop me. So, um, yeah, but when I got to the end, uh, yeah, I felt honestly, like, obviously tired, but I felt pretty good. Like, I, I banged out some push-ups at the finish and got people fired up, so it was pretty cool. Your lips still look like heck after all this time. Yeah, yeah, my lips, uh, my lips got pretty beat up with the sun. Um, you try and keep sunscreen and stuff on, but in the water, just they got pretty bad. They were a lot worse, but uh, they're still pretty beat up right now. Yeah. So it's interesting. It, it almost sounds like out of your whole crew, the one that always had faith was you. Yeah, exactly. I remember going under the bridge, and uh, at this point, I had hallucinations, uh, and my crew was really worried about me, and they actually had because they hadn't, they've never experienced it before, been part of a crew of somebody who's experienced it. They were they were quite worried for me. And uh, there was actually a conversation right after the bridge that uh, they were like, okay, Nick, like this is awesome. You're you're at the bridge, but I think we're gonna go up and we're gonna call it. And in the immediately I was like, no, like if, if you guys want to just leave me with a buddy in a kayak, like I appreciate the, the worry, but I'm gonna keep going. And as soon as I said that, of course, they, they stayed with me, and as they would, they're awesome crew. But I think then and there, they realized, like, hey, this is getting done no matter what. And uh, I remember telling my buddy, he's like, oh, dude, look at all the people. Like, this is so awesome. And I was like, yeah, but just imagine how it's going to feel in Penticton. And that just, like, made him realize, too, like, oh, yeah, we're going the whole way. So, Hallucinations. Like, what was that like? What were you hallucinating? Do you, um, do you remember? Yeah, oh, yeah, I had tons of stuff. I saw a uh, beaver with the machine guns in the water. I saw um, the, the, our support boat looked like a semi truck driving on the water to me. And I saw uh, there was one of our crew members had a bun like in her hair. Her hair was in a bun. And I thought there were chickens on everybody's heads. And <laughs> so I was, uh, I think it, your brain's so tired, it, it sees shapes and colors and things. It just takes the easiest route of what it thinks it could be. Yeah. And then when you stare at it for long enough, you realize, oh, that's not it. But when you're looking at it for a while, when you might be moving a bit, it, it looks really real. So. Right. Well, what a cherished memory. Beavers with machine guns. Right? Yeah, exactly. I see that every day. Thanks for telling us about it, Nick. Thanks. I appreciate it. And thanks for watching Kelowna Now.